Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. I am Peter the Programmer and I am now going to show you 5 easy steps for cleaning up horrible code. All of the steps should be easy to follow but if you have any questions please leave a comment. Ok, let's get started. This is a sample of bad code that is hard to understand. The function foo finds and returns an item with a given universally unique identifier also known as a UID. If there is no such item the function returns a value null, indicating that there was no match in our list of items. It is important to make sure that the function does the same thing after each completed step as the first version did. If you detect any errors, you are not allowed to fix them if you don't have any tests in place, as any change in functionality can break a larger application. Start off with fixing the indentation to make it easier to follow the logical reasoning behind the code. Simple structures are easy to misinterpret when there is nothing separating them. Then, fix the code so that it looks homogeneous in style. This means that any extra or missing spaces should be taken care of. It is also important to be consistent regarding the use of brackets. Should there be a new line or not? The answer is not important, but being consequent is. This is how the code should look after this step. Although the code is now easier to read than before, it might still be a bit tricky to understand. We now need to improve the readability of our function by renaming certain things. Since we know that the function is meant to find an item with a certain UID from a list, we can rename things to reflect this. We start with the function name and the two parameters, then we take care of our variable c. The code should now look something like this. Our code is now starting to look better, but we can improve it further. If we look at the way that the code works, we only return null if there is no item with the UID that we have specified, and we return the item with said UID if it is found. If you are not familiar with UIDs, the acronym stands for Universally Unique Identifier, which means that only one item should ever be able to have the specified UID. Right now, we are waiting until the very end of the list before we return. This means that we are constantly looking at all our items. Given the fact that the first item with the specified UID will also be the only one we can ever find, we can remove the result variable altogether as it has become redundant. Our new code should look like this. Not only is it more compact and easy to understand, but it is also more performant as we might be able to terminate before reaching the end of our items. We can improve a bit of our structure now and eliminate one variable that currently serves no purpose. The variable that I am referring to is the variable i that is only used for our array iteration. Using the for each construct provided by the PHP language, we can clean this up and make the code even more readable. It is also good to know that similar constructs exist in most other languages like JavaScript, C Sharp, and Java. By replacing our for loop, we can make the code easier to understand. After this step, our code will look something like this. Our code is now a lot easier to work with than what we started out with. It is easy to see what happens in the function, and the naming has been done in such a way that the function is documenting itself. This is excellent, but we should leave a quick note on a function level as to what the function does, mainly what parameter it takes and what the output is. This is easily done using a document format known as phpdoc. If you are using an IDE, it should detect this information and display this to you so that you don't have to read through the function all the time. This is especially helpful in larger projects where you have hundreds or thousands of different functions. If you are working with a recent version of PHP or another language that is either statically typed or has features for type checking, you can type hint the function parameters if you are certain that they will not break any of the old functionality. Our code should look something like this now. And there we have it. There is not much we can do about the code on this simple level. We started out with something horrible and we were then able to make it a lot better through five quick and easy steps. That's it for me today. I wish you all a very pleasant day of coding.